Aloha, I'm your Minivan Dykin MD from Out of the Doldrums, and today we're going to dive into the fascinating topic of histamine intolerance. Histamine intolerance is a condition in which the body is unable to break down histamine properly. This leads to an accumulation of the chemical in the body. For some people, this can cause a range of unpleasant symptoms when consumed in excess. So what is histamine exactly? Histamine is a chemical that's naturally produced by the body, and it's also present in many foods. It plays an important role in the immune system, helping to defend against foreign invaders such as bacteria and viruses. However, for some people, histamine can cause all sorts of issues when consumed in excess. We call this histamine intolerance. So histamine intolerance is a condition in which the body is unable to break down histamine properly. This leads to an accumulation of histamine. Having too much histamine can cause a range of symptoms, including headaches, rashes, stuffiness, itching, flushing, hives, nausea, diarrhea, and even difficulty breathing. Why on earth does this happen? In order to understand this, we have to dive down into the biology and chemistry of histamine. This part of the video gets a little bit sciencey, but it's important. So put on your science hats and hang in there if you can. Histamine was first discovered in 1910 by two pioneering researchers named Dale and Laidlaw at the Wellcome Physiological Research Laboratories. Further research studies demonstrated that histamine is synthesized and stored in high concentrations in things called secretory granules. Think of these granules as little storage sacks stuffed full of histamine, just waiting for a trigger like an invading virus or bacteria to release all that histamine stored all at once. Once that histamine is free, it goes on to play an important role in our immune response, helping us to fight off foreign invaders, and it keeps us healthy. So when histamine is released from the granules, it travels through our bloodstream and binds to special histamine receptors on various cells in our body. This binding can cause a number of effects, such as dilation of blood vessels, increased mucus production, and the contraction of smooth muscles. There are two main types of cells in our body that produce histamine, mast cells and basophils. Mast cells are present in tissues all throughout our body and they're found in the most density on our skin and in our intestines. Basophils, on the other hand, are a type of white blood cell. So they're cells that circulate in the bloodstream and because of this, they can visit every single nook and cranny of the body. By now, you can probably tell that histamine is super important to our overall health as it plays a role in many physiological processes like regulating our immune system, allergies, and acting as a neurotransmitter. There's four types of histamine receptors in our bodies. They're aptly named H1, H2, H3, and H4. As you can see, there are multiple receptor types in different tissues of the body. As it turns out, too much of a good thing is not always a good thing. For some people, their bodies cannot break down histamine properly, and this leads to histamine intolerance. So symptoms of histamine intolerance can vary, but they often include things like headaches, hives, nasal congestion, runny nose, and even GI issues. These symptoms occur for one of three reasons. When the level of histamine in the body becomes too high and the body cannot break it down quickly enough, or when there's a disorder in how the cells transport histamine, or from certain medications and health conditions. Here's where things get really interesting. In addition to being manufactured in our own body, histamine is present in many of the foods that we eat. Common histamine-rich foods are fish and seafood, aged or fermented foods like bacon, cheese, pickles, sauerkraut, wine, and other alcoholic fermented beverages like beer and champagne. There's even a few vegetables that are quite high in histamine, spinach, eggplant, and tomatoes. Hmm. Once we have a load of histamine, whether it's from our food or from our bodies, we need to metabolize it. Histamine is metabolized through two main pathways. This is important, so pay attention. The first pathway involves being broken down by a protein called diamine oxidase, or DAO, or D-A-O. 
The second pathway involves being broken down by an enzyme called histamine N-methyltransferase, or HNMT. HNMT breaks down histamine inside the cells, and DAO, or DAO, is a secreted protein that breaks down histamine outside the cells. In either scenario, the histamine is broken down and is ultimately excreted in the urine. Okay, so there's one more important thing we need to cover. Histamine intolerance is very different from histamine poisoning. Histamine poisoning is when histamine levels get quite high, much higher than we see in histamine intolerance. Histamine poisoning is also called scrombroid syndrome or scrombroidosis. This is most commonly seen after eating fish and includes a gnarly skin rash, abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, shortness of breath. Oh yeah, and by the way, it can also be fatal. Ugh, doesn't that just look so itchy and dangerous? If this happens to you, don't think it's histamine intolerance. Go to the emergency room right away, please. This is very serious and it's sometimes a life-threatening condition. Luckily, histamine intolerance is a much more mild version of this. So let's quickly review five reasons why we can get histamine intolerance. Number one, genetics. There's some genetic changes that can result in a lower activity of DAO, which results in histamine intolerance. Number two, dysbiosis. We now know that disturbances in our intestinal microbiome can lead to increased histamine levels. Why is this, you say? Well, it's because bacteria also seem to synthesize and secrete histamine. Here's a list of some bacterial species that are known to be histamine producers. So the presence of bacteria, yeast, and molds that form histamine in the GI tract may increase the sensitivity of some people to histamine ingestion. It's important to note here that certain bacterial species that we think of as probiotics, like some lactobacillus species, can cause histamine formation. So probiotics may not be the best solution to histamine intolerance. There could be a potential role for special tailored probiotics that contain bacterial strains that are known for breaking down histamine. As far as I know, no such probiotic has been scientifically validated yet. Number three, related diseases. Sometimes there are other allergic diseases that are associated with increased histamine levels. Most commonly, this is something like asthma, allergic rhinitis, or atopic dermatitis. We also see elevated histamine levels due to DAO deficiency in some GI disorders like celiac disease, carbohydrate malabsorption, and other various food allergies. Lastly, chronic infections can also lead to both increased histamine in the body and DAO deficiency. Number four, drug-induced. There's some drugs that cause histamine intolerance. These include phlegm-reducing agents, things like acetylcysteine, ambroxol, or antiemetics like Reglan or metoclopramide, antiarrhythmic drugs like verapamil, alcohol, antidepressants like amitriptyline, chloroquine, and clavulonic acid. In this case, stopping this drug lowers your histamine levels. Number five food induced. There are three ways that food can cause high histamine levels. Some foods are rich in histamine, other foods promote the release of histamine, and yet other foods block the action of DAO so no histamine can be broken down. All of these mechanisms result in the same thing, histamine intolerance. Foods rich in histamine are like we mentioned above, fish, sauerkraut, smoked meat products, cheeses. Foods that promote the release of histamine include citrus fruits, papaya, strawberries, egg whites, chocolate, some nuts, fish, pork, cheese, fermented sausage, green peppers, wheat germ, and bean sprouts. Some foods can block the action of DAO, and these foods include fermented sausage, cheese, fish sauce, green peppers, citrus fruits, wheat germ, and bean sprouts. Some foods take the triple crown. They do all three mechanisms all at once. A good example of this is fish. This is a food that's rich in histamine. It promotes histamine too, and it blocks DAO. So by now, you should be realizing that histamine intolerance is a complicated syndrome, and it's caused by multiple factors. Let's briefly review why histamine intolerance does what it does in different organs. First organ, the skin. 
the skin contains histamine receptors. So we commonly see itchy skin, or we call it pruritus, flushed skin, edema or swelling, and eczema-like changes. Second organ, the GI tract. Did you know that the GI tract contains almost all of the histamine receptors in our bodies? As a result, people with histamine intolerance usually have many GI symptoms, which can include abdominal pain, bloating and gassiness, diarrhea or constipation, and nausea or vomiting. Third organ system, the respiratory system. We often see runny nose, nasal obstruction, and congestion with histamine intolerance. Sometimes when the intolerance is severe, there's asthma-like symptoms. Fourth organ system, the nervous system. People with histamine intolerance sometimes get dizziness, headache, migraines, and a watery runny nose. Fifth organ system, the cardiovascular system. Some people experience a racing heart rate, or we call it tachycardia, when they have histamine intolerance. If you have any of these symptoms, though, it's important not to assume that they're due to histamine intolerance only. There could be other medical things going on. In medicine, we call this the differential diagnosis. We need to make sure that this is not some other medical condition. Similar medical conditions include food allergies, irritable bowel syndrome, celiac disease, H. pylori infection, eosinophilic gastroenteritis, urticaria, or a condition called systemic mastocytosis. If you have concerns about that, it'd be a good idea to see a medical practitioner to further evaluate. I feel like one of those drug commercials. If you had urticaria, da da da. Okay, so now that we have defined and described histamine and intolerance, let's review current potential treatment options. It's worthwhile to note that this is still a new condition and it's still a bit controversial in mainstream medicine. Because of this, the research on treatment is pretty limited. I expect that treatment options will change significantly over the next three to five years. For now, there's four main options. They can be implemented together or individually. Let's review them. Treatment option number one, limit histamine. Seems pretty obvious, but this paper nicely outlines a histamine elimination diet pattern, and it's free for anyone to read. I'll link it in the description below. This diet would limit histamine containing and triggering foods for 10 to 14 days. It would also limit foods that cause histamine release and foods that inhibit DAO. This is a list we talked about earlier. Try to eat plenty of foods that have a very low likelihood of triggering histamine intolerance and eat them as fresh as you possibly can. Here's a good list of foods to eat, like safe foods. After 14 days, start slowly adding back some of those histamine foods and keep a food journal to see how you feel after eating them. The foods that don't sit well with you, well, avoid them. It's important because every individual has a different sensitivity to histamine, and one person may tolerate what another person does not. Once you have that figured out, stick to the foods that do not elicit a histamine response in you. There's good science behind this dietary approach. Adherence to a low histamine diet has been shown to lead to improved GI, skin, and neurological symptoms. One study even showed that a low histamine diet raised levels of DAO in the blood, so that's a good thing. Treatment option number two, avoid alcohol. Alcohol is a direct inhibitor of DAO, so it's a setup for histamine intolerance. One of the worst offenders is wine, red, white, and sparkling. Even champagne is notorious for triggering a histamine response. Treatment option three, supplement with DAO. There's such a thing as DAO capsules that can be taken. Interestingly, most DAO supplements you can buy are basically extracted from a pig's kidney. The pig kidney supplement though has been approved by the European Food Safety Agency or EFSA, and they recommend a maximum dose of 0.9 milligrams of DAO daily. For the vegetarian and vegans out there, or if you just don't feel like eating pig kidneys, don't worry, we gotcha. There's some research looking into DAO supplementation with sprouts, particularly pea sprouts. They also contain DAO. Just be aware though that pretty much all of the research has been done on the pig kidney derived DAO, and there's a very minimal research done on the pea sprout DAO supplement, or from sprouts in general. That doesn't mean they don't work, it just hasn't been studied as much. But there's really no danger to eating pea sprouts, they actually sound kind of good, so it'd be completely reasonable to try growing your own sprouts and eating them. It may make a difference. If it does, 
let us know in the comments below. So zooming out to all the DAO supplements, do these even work? Like I said, we definitely need more studies and the science is new on this, but the research we have so far is looking pretty promising. This small pilot interventional study published in 2019 identified 28 patients with histamine intolerance. They then supplemented with DAO, the pig kidney kind. For four weeks, they were instructed to take DAO capsules before meals. Then, throughout a follow-up period, they were instructed not to take the DAO. Research found that all symptoms improved significantly during DAO supplementation. When the DAO supplementation stopped, the symptoms increased again. The researchers concluded, quote, we've demonstrated a significant reduction of every histamine intolerance related symptom and its intensity due to DAO oral supplementation, end quote. That's a lofty claim. Wait a minute, every histamine intolerance related symptom? It's a claim that makes me a bit suspicious, but some things to note about this study, it's relatively a small study and larger randomized studies are needed to further evaluate the effects of DAO supplementation. How about treatment option number four? Take an antihistamine. This can be done in addition to treatment options one, two, and three. It's not a long-term approach. We don't wanna be on antihistamines long-term if we can help it. But it's reasonable though to take one or two every now and then if we have significant symptoms. Diphenhydramine, or Benadryl, has been shown to increase DAO activity. Research has also shown that if the symptoms of histamine intolerance are GI symptoms, taking an H2 blocker may improve those symptoms. Here are four H2 receptor blockers that are available over the counter in the US. So Tagamet, Cimetidine, Zantac, Ranitidine, Axid, Nizatidine, and Pepsid, or Famotidine. Try it out. Treatment number five add other adjuncts. There's some research showing that taking vitamin C and vitamin D6 can increase the activity of DAO, and that degrades histamine. Mast cell stabilizers like pancreatin also have a positive effect on histamine intolerance, especially for people with GI symptoms. So that could be worth a try, and you can pick up quality over-the-counter pancreatic enzymes quite readily. Lastly, because histamine intolerance can sometimes be due to dysbiosis or an unhealthy microbiome, incorporating prebiotics may improve the dysbiosis and thereby improve histamine intolerance symptoms. As of right now, I would not recommend taking a probiotic to treat histamine intolerance. It could actually make the symptoms worse. A couple more words of caution when shopping for a DAO supplement. Remember, Supplements are generally unregulated and may not contain what it says it does on the label, or it may not have the concentration it says it has. This is in no way a sponsored video, but here are some examples of available DAO supplements that have concentrations of DAO similar to what was used in the studies that we talked about. Histamine blocker, histamine digest, and histamine manager. Here's an example of a pea sprout DAO enzyme. Just remember, this source has not really been studied that much, so I'm not sure if it works the same as the pig kidney kind. Also, be sure to read the label. Some brands have no DAO whatsoever. They contain other immunomodulating ingredients like quercetin, but contain no DAO. While quercetin is good and all, and I've got nothing against quercetin, it's been shown to decrease the release of histamine from mast cells and test tubes. There's no evidence that quercetin is beneficial for histamine intolerance symptoms in people. So read the label and buyer beware. Okay, it's a wrap. What did you think of this video on histamine intolerance? What else do you wanna know about histamine intolerance? After watching this video, what strategies are you gonna to try to improve your symptoms? Am I missing anything? Other suggestions we haven't talked about yet? Let me know in the comments below. I certainly hope you found this video informative and applicable. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna show us some real support, please subscribe. Until next time, stay healthy and aloha.